everyone. Thanks for tuning in to today's virtual tour. I'm Christina, here with Cassidy. We are here at the Missouri Botanical Garden where we are starting to see some of the first signs of fall. So you can see behind us here, this dogwood tree is already starting to change pretty significantly. This is usually an early changing color. Yeah, and in addition to the leaves that are this kind of dark red, um, you also have these bright red berries too. So a couple of different ways to um, experience fall color. It's not always just in the foliage. It can be in these, uh, in fruits too. This is a time of year when a lot of uh, trees will have uh, ripe fruits or nuts. Um, so there's the, the dogwood fruit and then you have the, the leaves which are uh, changing colors and also uh, showing some signs of distress and they're getting ready for the cold months ahead. Not that I want to think about the cold right now. It's a beautiful day and uh, I think this is going to be a great week. The kind of week that um, is good for that change over to fall colors. Um, you get those starting to get those cooler temperatures, those cold nights. Um, it's like a classic blue sky that is associated with fall today too. Yeah, the more sun we get during the day, um, the better for kind of helping those fall colors along and then helping sustain them once they change. So it's all in the weather and and how those elements cooperate, not just now as things start to change, but really where they've been all year. Um, and that, that kind of helps determine whether the trees are stressed out, maybe from drought or overwatering, and, um, and that can affect um, when trees change their color, how long they hold that color for, how quickly they drop their leaves. Uh, all those things come into play and it all sort of plays out in this in this month here um, October is kind of that big month of uh, where everything changes over and by the time we get uh, to November there'll, there'll be a lot of things that um, will have changed colors if not dropped their leaves entirely even and speaking of that change you can see here in these beds, the pin, cu pin cushion gardens have already been taken up and a lot of summer annuals are going to be removed in the coming weeks um, and replaced in some cases with fall plantings or in some cases prepared for planting bulbs that will bloom in the springtime. So this is a big, um, big area for those annuals here in the formal garden, the Cresco family garden. There's just a lot of summer color still hanging around here in this area. It's really bright and colorful right now. So again, early in October, it is kind of a month of transition and here at the beginning, there's still, it still feels like summer sometimes. And this is one of those areas that will get planted out with bulbs for the spring. So um, tulips, this is a, a really beautiful display garden year round and it has these tropical um, annuals in the summer. And then um, in the spring, this is uh, all these same beds will be filled with tulips. Uh, so that's something that the horticulture staff here typically uh, we'll plant those bulbs later in November and they'll overwinter in the ground and then come up as it starts to get warm in the spring. Another thing that is going to be changing as we move into fall is origami in the garden. 
So this is the very last week that you can see this exhibit. It's been here with us all summer. Um, and for those of you who don't know, it is an exhibit of metal casts of origami. So there are quite a few sculptures throughout the garden. If you haven't seen it yet, it is definitely worth stopping by and, and walking the garden grounds to see how many of these sculptures you can find. So that will be here until October 10th, which is this coming Sunday. And it's a beautiful week in the forecast, so great time to come visit if you haven't seen origami in the garden yet. We're walking past the um, this this lawn here. It's called a bulb meadow, um, and there's a couple of squirrels really in, enjoying uh, their time out of here in front of us, getting getting ready for winter. But uh, I'm also noticing the um, crocuses that we have, the autumn crocuses that are um, coming up right now in the bulb lawn. I think the the rain that we had over the weekend kind of knocked a few of them back, but um, the ones that made it through have these really pretty soft purple petals, uh, and they're kind of sticking up out of the um, the lawn here. This whole area is kind of designed to be um, low to no mow, so they don't run mowers across this. It's not a manicured lawn in the way that many of us think of the, the expanses of green grass. Um, it's allowed to get a little bit wild and it's a great place to see um, different kinds of uh, bulb plants. Uh, there's quite a few in the spring with the spring blooming crocuses and, um, and little irises and fritillaries. Uh, and then you're seeing Again, here in the fall, these autumn crocus start to pop up and provide some color in this spot as well. Here's another of those um, origami sculptures here. This one feels appropriate for the season. This is seed sower and origami squirrel and here across the path an acorn. So as we were just seeing a moment ago those squirrels gathering nuts right there in that field. And we'll see lots of baby oak trees popping up mm -hmm. in the spring from all their work. Well, we've hopped into the English Woodland Garden here. Um, this is actually kind of an interesting place to see some color. You can, you might be able to see it ahead of us and we'll, we'll get a little closer. But there are these um, fall blooming um, rhododendrons. And so there are these varieties that will put on these blooms that you maybe more associate with, say, the month of May. Um, but here we are in October, and here's the um, this bright pink. And these are, um, this one in particular has a, has a horticulture trade name of Autumn Amethyst. And so these are ones that are, are known to bloom this time of year and provide some color. So we have a few different spots where there's these um, bright pink flowers that maybe feel a little bit out of character when you think about fall, but um, are, are blooming exactly when they're meant to.
And I'll give you one bit of advice if you're gonna come and visit the English wooden, woodland garden this time of year is um, make sure you're not the first person to walk these paths in the morning. Uh, there are lots of spiders that like to set their webs across the, the path to catch, uh, catch their meals. And if you're the, the first one uh, through in the morning, as, as we are right now, you're likely to get just a little bit of, um, just a little bit of uh, spider webs in your face. This kind of, this caught my attention as we were walking by. Um, this is a type, um, it's, a, it's a member of the holly family. So it's called winterberry, uh, ilex uh, ver verticillata probably saying that I don't know exactly if I'm saying that right but uh, this particular type is called um, winter gold and you can see these these gold little berries here I believe this is a deciduous holly so this should be getting ready to um, drop its leaves for the winter um, and that's a, opposed to the evergreen hollies that you maybe associate with um, with the winter holidays, um, which are the English holly and then also the American holly. So this is just a different, uh, a different plant in that same family. And it has these really pretty uh, gold berries on it that caught my eye as we were kind of passing through. Um, and this should be the time of year that you start to see these berries developing on um, all the different kinds of holly trees that uh, grow here in temperate regions like St. Louis. Here's another late summer bloomer. This is windflower. And whenever these bloom, it's a lot. <laughs> As you can see, they're really profusely blooming. It's a really pretty display here as we're walking into the boxwood garden. Yeah, and if you haven't had a chance to come and check out the boxwood garden this summer, um, I, and much like with everything else, it's getting ready to, to change over, but it, it looks really good right now. With all these flowers in between the boxwood hedges, Those really big showy pink ones with the yellow in the center are a type of dahlia. We can go down and see them a little closer. And as we walk down, see this patch of uh, white flowers on the right here is some more crocus uh, that have popped up. They're a little dirty from the rain splattering up on them, but once the sun comes out and the dirt dries up, they'll, they'll bounce back and look real nice. And yeah, this is a really pretty display. have those flowers that Christina was was mentioning that the dahlias and you have these are um, like mist flower maybe or, or in that ballpark um, so those are looking um, looking really good and especially because we've had that wet weather they have this kind of glisten on them uh, this morning it just adds that extra layer and here's another fall bloomer 
here to the side. There's not a, um, a ton of flowers on it yet, but you can see where uh, they all will be. This is a, an aster um, of some sort. And so got these really distinct um, purple petals. And then you can just see all the buds that are still all over this plant that haven't opened yet. I mean, there's covered in them. So as we get here in the next few weeks, um, it'll really start to fill out and really show off at that distinct purple color. kind of a neat thing that you'll see in fall. I mentioned earlier this is a time of year to look for fruit. So this is uh, Magnolia grandiflora. This is um, a southern magnolia and this is the fruiting structure that's left behind after, um, after those big beautiful white flowers appear in the summer and you have these, um, all these little red seeds that are popping out of the capsules. So you can see here one where it's just starting um, to emerge that way and then others that have already done so. And um, you'll, you'll see that around um, as you're out and about on these on these trees this time of year and it's it's kind of neat they look a little like pine cones but they're not they're not pine cones they're not um, they're not related and over here you see some grasses that are starting to change color a little bit too This purple one is really pretty. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Pink. Oh yes, okay, it's the pink muley grass. So we actually um, had a tour of this area of the garden with Daria a few months ago now, and um, we were looking at this when it was really little and didn't have any of that color at all and she mentions to keep an eye out for it at this time of year. You can see it just looks like purple mist. It's really nice. And this section, um, this section of the Kemper Center for Home Gardening Outdoor Gardens is actually um, been undergoing a renovation and is still uh, in the midst of that, but this is a section that has um, just recently been uh, reopened so you can access it. And so it's definitely worth coming and, um, and taking a look at the new plantings um, and new layout that they've been working on here. And, um, and this is something that hopefully in about another year or so will be be wrapped up and it's uh, um, going to be an, uh, an all new um, sort of prairie, um, a look at how you can incorporate plants of the prairie into a home gardening, um, a home gardening setup.
we're walking into the Japanese garden now, which is always a nice place to see some fall color. You can see uh, sort of straight ahead right here. That's another dogwood in the distance that's changing color. Yeah, there's really not a whole lot of change yet. Um, and some plants are a little showier than others. We're walking right now past all of the Yoshino cherries that um, are really known for that display in the spring when they're full of white flowers. Um, in the fall, they have yellow flowers. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily our yellow flowers, excuse me, yellow leaves. I wouldn't say it's um, it's super remarkable. They don't necessarily all change at once and stay on the tree for a long period of time. But then we're walking past these river birch here um, on the left, and these also will get, the leaves will turn yellow, uh, and they do tend to stick around a little bit longer and make for a, a nice display. But again, it, it just kind of depends on um, all those different uh, factors with the weather and how those leaves change and, and how that display looks from year to year. But not much at this point. I got one of those spider webs I was warning everyone about. <laughs> we must be the first ones to walk this way this morning. And you can see in this stream bed area, some more of those nice fall grasses look really nice at this time of year. Yeah, and those are grasses that actually uh, the staff will leave up through the winter. Um, so that's something to consider is just because it goes dormant doesn't necessarily mean that you need to cut it back and be done with it. Uh, you can leave you can leave things up um, through the winter and often they're providing habitat for insects or little critters. Um, they can provide food as well, um, like coneflower heads can provide seeds um, throughout the winter. So it's not necessarily just because it, it kind of dies back in the winter doesn't mean that um, it's something you necessarily would want to cut back unless you're going for a specific aesthetic in your garden space. Some really pretty bright red on that tree. Yeah, and in the Japanese garden you will start to see some of those Japanese maples turning a little earlier than other trees as well. In fact, let's see if we can get a little bit of a better view of that. It's sort of lit up in a way where you can't see <coughs> the color too well from this angle, but it is a really nice bright red. And the Japanese maples are something that um, you know, it can be a little bit deceptive because some of those trees have colorful foliage all year. Um, you know, the darker reds, um, things with a little bit of a tinge to them. And then they'll, um, but as they start to change, they actually will hold on to their leaves um, for a while once they change. So a lot of times, uh, the Japanese maples and the Japanese gardens, uh, that's a place to come and visit sort of later in the fall when a lot of those bigger trees have maybe finished their show. A lot of the Japanese maples will still be kind of holding on, sometimes all the way up until um, a first real hard frost. This is another sign of fall here, the mums have just recently been planted here in the Japanese garden. So 
you can see all along that whole back row there, a whole lot of garden mums. And then here in front, these huge flowers here, and they'll get even bigger and showier, are also a type of, or different types of chrysanthemums. So those will only get bigger and brighter and better throughout the next few weeks. Definitely something worth visiting when you come to the garden. Yeah, and this area actually, um, just going back to the Japanese maples for a little bit, this whole hill is covered in Japanese maples and right now they're still pretty green. Um, and in the next month or so, this, this particular spot um, just gets, all of these trees just turn so many different bright, vibrant colors here. Um, so this is one of those things where it's not, it's not quite there yet, but once it starts to go and once it turns, um, this is a really pretty uh, spot to come and see the color in the Japanese maples in addition to the mums. Even now, looking ahead, you can kind of see a sort of yellow tint or just a dustier green than it is in the middle of summer when it's that deep, dark green. You can tell that the leaves are just starting to change, even if it's not obvious quite yet. There's some bits of color as we come up here around this uh, this corner and kind of look out on this vantage point. The tree we're under right now is a is a black gum, a Nyssa sylvatica. Uh, so these will get really pretty fall color, and you can see um, you can see some of that red kind of coming through on the leaves already. Uh, and there's a handful of these types of trees planted along this bank, uh, including one that we know is um, more than 100 years old. It was planted in the 1800s and is still hanging on here on the, the shore of the Japanese Garden Lake. And, and I, I like this spot in particular because you get this neat reflection. I don't know how well the camera uh, picks up on it, but it's a, a spot where the, the sun bounces off the water and on the underside of these leaves here and just provides a, a really neat reflection. And especially once you get that color change, um, it's just a really great spot to come and sit and, and enjoy fall. So thank you all for tuning in today and sticking around while we showed you some of the changing signs of the season as we're heading into October here in St. Louis. It's a really beautiful time of year to come visit. And don't forget it is the last week to see origami in the garden. So if you're able to come in person, it's a good time to do that. We'll see you next time.